I offer my respectful obeisances to Krishna Nandana's exalted son, Sri Shamananda. He is great mercy personified. He is the captain of, a bo of, of the boat, desiring to rescue the people drowning in the horrible, impassable ocean of birth and death. He came to this world, bringing with him the wonderful, powerful boat of pure love for Lord Krishna, a boat that at once takes one to the furthest shore. An ocean of mercy. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Duraka's son. Yeah, you see, these are the qualities of the empowered spiritual master. See? When the Lord's ready to deliver people, such power is released in this world. See? So, and it's used, the book Bhagavat, see the book Bhagavat and the devotee Bhagavat, see, absorbed in the mellows of devotion, that's a qualification, and then they're able to slash to pieces all these speculations and illusions. Okay. See, that was going on back then, 500 years ago. So, and that's when, when people, you see how easy love of God was? Because if you take the association of the devotee that's teaching the confidential purport of the scriptures, see, he was teaching slashing. Uh, Prabhupada slashed it in his books, slashed all the illusions, all subtle within and without the movement. But he didn't preach it openly yet because, you know, that's, you know, that's another thing. Just like the Goswamis, they wrote the books, but they didn't preach it. And they then the next phase was empowering the devotee. The, devo the Shamananda was one of them to take these books uh, to um, Bengal and use it for preaching and slash all the illusions, man. And then bestow this nectar. You see, you have to have a change of heart. The, the atheists say that they have to hear this preaching all these people caught up in these various obstacles, they have to hear the preaching and then repent and realize, you know, this, this I, I think I want to just get, look at these. Because it's the same thing. People start to get this nectar who listen to the confidential message, powerful message from such devotees. They start to get this bhakti and then it changes the hearts of these other people. They think, whoa, you know, we thought he was just an ordinary person. Okay? See, they, even they were thinking here, he was so powerfully preaching the truth, but those who were actually, um, um, you know, against and all this, they considered him an uh, ordinary person. Okay, that's what the Maya does. So anyway, when people start to see that, that those who do listen, See, then they get this because when you listen, you're born of the word spoken. See, like, like the, uh, Jesus Christ in the book of John, the first chapter, he came to his own. He came, uh, the first chapter, first, uh, first verses. Um, Jesus, uh, he came to his own, the Jewish people, and most rejected him. But whoever did receive him, see, receive, you receive the word, you receive that See, that word of a devotee is not their word, per se. It's the word of the Lord, the, the breath of God blowing through their, the flute, you know, and that's conclusive truth, and that's what liberates people. See? If you just start to listen to that, then you start to get purified, see, cleansed out. Okay. And then this this love awakens, and so that's, that's that causes that, or spiritual rebirth. That's what we saw in Mayapur. You saw uh, Govinda and that they had this spiritual rebirth. They heard, they were born of the word, born of the preaching of the devotee. See, when, the, when a real authentic devotee preaches, whoever listens and, and takes that seed inside them, the fruit bears eventually this ecstatic devotion. And it's like Johann says, it's very amazing. Everybody that's getting it is saying it's amazing. 
Because it's the only amazing thing in this world. Everything else is same old, same old bullshit, you know. 